general relativity, step by step. I've been talking quite a lot about the stress-energy tensor with two indices up, and I've shown how we can just quite as easily think about it with two indices down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to consider a particular control volume, and here's me looking at it. That's me. And this control volume's got all sorts of weird things going on. There's things moving, all sorts of things. And of course what I want to do, rather than just me looking at it, is considering it from Baz's perspective. Here's Baz, his spaceship. There he is, and he's cruising along with velocity. I'm going to call it u obs. There's four velocity. It's going to be u obs. And I'm going to ask, what does Baz see? Well, Baz sees the amount of momentum inside there, the four momentum. Oops, that should be downstairs indexed. Put that there. And that's going to equal t alpha beta times minus u obs beta times the size of the control volume here. This is just a special case of the definition of the stress-energy tensor. Uh, there's quite a lot going on here. This is the stress-energy tensor with two indices lowered. There's a peculiar minus sign here, which is enough to drive you nuts. Uh, it's basically because although Baz himself is moving this way, he sees this control volume as moving that way. So that's why the sign error is there. This is Baz's speed, and that's the size of the control volume. I guess Really what the control volume is, is a little four vector perpendicular to that uh, four vector there. But it's just a special case of the stress energy tensor definition. So if I want to work out what Baz sees as the total energy density, or, well, the total energy in this little control volume, delta V, what is that? Well, that's minus the momentum dotted with the observer's speed. And that's just a standard result from relativity that we covered, special relativity, that we covered, oh, I don't know, donkey's years ago. Screencast 10 or 20 or something. I can't remember. Well, let's write it out in uh, tensor notation. It's minus delta P alpha times U alpha obs. So it's just momentum times speed, or four momentum, dot product with speed. Oh, hang on. That's, I keep on writing the alpha up. That should be written down. And of course, one index up and one index down means that we can sum over it. But we can do something else. We can say it's minus, and then of course we can write down what the... Uh, we can expand this term in terms of the stress energy tensor. T alpha beta, U alpha obs, U beta obs. And that equals the energy density in the volume as measured by Baz, as measured by Baz in his spaceship, which is cruising along at some speed. Well, Baz is moving, whose speed is u obs. OK, and that's his energy density. And I'm going to call that delta E. Now, it's not unreasonable to demand that delta E is maybe not strictly greater, but certainly greater than zero. We demand this. That means that everyone, including Baz, sees a positive, a positive, a positive energy density, including Baz sees delta, oops, hmm. I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, everyone sees that delta E is greater than or equal to zero. And this is known as the, the weak energy condition, which equals a physical uh, condition on the stress energy tensor, which, well, there's no mathematics here. It's just that you seem to get into problems mathematically. Well, it's one of these things. You just demand it. It's, it's, it's like saying the kinetic energy of an object is positive or the mass of an object is positive. It's just a, a restriction we place on physically realistic stress energy tensors. Of course, 
because it's called the weak energy condition, there's another energy condition as well called the dominant energy condition, which is a little bit more restricted than that, and I'll cover that in the next screencast. But for the moment, the weak energy condition is that the energy density is greater than or equal to zero for any observer, including this guy here in his spaceship. And it doesn't matter how how fast or how slowly Baz is going. It doesn't matter what direction he's going. For any four velocity, any observer will see this. And that, that places that places mathematical restrictions on what forms of stress energy tensors are acceptable. So you might be fooling around with any kind of clever system here, but you normally require that this energy condition is met. And I'm going to stop there. Stop.